Welcome to the She Is podcast by Refuge City Church. We are here to have a Bible-based conversation about who you are in Christ. Oh, yes. Hi. Hello. (laughs) I see you. Welcome. Good to see you. (laughs) Well, I want to thank our listeners for choosing to listen to us today. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad that we don't just, you know sit in a room and record this and and that's all that happens it's pretty cool that the conversation that that we have today gets to gets to bless our listeners and i i want to encourage you listeners that if you are enjoying this podcast will you share it with your friends Mm -hmm. will you Mm -hmm. um give a five star rating Mm -hmm. for it that will actually really help us um be able to reach more people um so those ratings are really really important and really if you've been listening long you know that this podcast Podcast is all about uh, learning who we are in Christ, mm-hmm. getting to know who we were actually created to be. Uh, we ask questions. Sometimes we don't always answer them, but we we have conversation mm-hmm. wrapped all around the Bible and wrapped all around who who God says that we are and how we can apply the Bible to our lives every day. So mm-hmm. that's why we're here once again. Yay! <laughs> so we want to thank you guys you ladies for for listening in and making us part of your week. So today, uh, Amanda's going to be sharing with us. Oh, yeah. And uh, Nicole's on vacation. Uh, uh Oh, congratulations. (laughs) Good job. (laughs) It was heartfelt. And so laughing to my left today is my lovely daughter, Lene. Thank you. (laughs) Oh, they're so excited that you're here. Oh, my gosh. Okay, every time I've been on here, I haven't had headphones. Uh But today I do, and I get to hear everything. Oh, uh, you guys that's here amazing. because last time I would just watch you guys like dance around listening to the music that plays at the beginning and I just sit there waiting <laughs> for it to end. So. You, yeah, you didn't actually get to hear our audience laughing. Thank you, audience. You. <laughs> You've been a great Thank audience. Thank you for being here today. Oh my, <laughs> so cute. Uh, All right, so what's what's up next? What's up, Doc? What uh-huh. is up? Uh, it's funsies Yay. today. I am. Oh, I don't want you to see that. I gotta uh, sit closer to the mic though. Um, so we're back with some more Mad Libs, yeah. or as somebody All else right. called it, angry words. Angry words. <laughs> angry, words. <laughs> angry funny words. Um, so I'll go around in a circle. I think we all know how to play this by now. Uh-huh. Hopefully, uh-huh. I'll ask you for a noun, adjective. Body part, all that kind of stuff, and you give it to me, and then <laughs> we're gonna. Body part. <laughs> yeah, there there is one in this one, oh. and then I will read this, and hopefully it is as hilarious as our last ones. Yes. Okay. So today I'm gonna start with Lene. Oh. Oh. I um, didn't want that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I need did. a full name of person, male. Make one up. Um. Stephen. K. <laughs> Sorry. With the dot. Uh-huh. <laughs> With the dot. I sense the formality. Yeah. Um, what's like a fancy last name? Smith and Hopper. <laughs> I'm sorry. Was that not fancy? No, <laughs> that's good. I like that. Yes. Okay, yeah. Do you okay. need to know how to spell it? Because <laughs> we, we, we don't know how. I'm just going to make it up. Is that good? Uh, yeah, that'll work. All right, <laughs> Sherry. Uh, I need Good. a noun. Uh, person, place, or thing. Um, table. Table. Noun. Shoe. There's going to be a lot of nouns. Mm. Ooh. I have mine. Noun. Next one. Rowboat. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> noun. Stoplight. Stoplight. Oh. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh my gosh, yeah, there's a lot. Noun. Again? Uh, let's do a person. Boy. Can we say boy? Let's say boy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, noun. Um, frog. <laughs> he was in one of our last ones, too. Oh, he was. Body part. Oh, I got it. Oh. <sighs> Ankle. <laughs> Super important, but very underrated. Now, oh my gosh, I was showing off my angels today. Oh, that's a good one. Noun. <sighs> mm, 
Tahiti. Oh, Ooh, wow. that's the place. <laughs> <laughs> For ankles. <laughs> Adjective. Oh. Um, slimy. Mm. <laughs> That slimy ankle and eating <laughs> adjective rude. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, that slimy rude ankle and to eating uh, noun. Um, cottage. Oh, but this one has a lot. Noun. Jill. Jill. Mm-hmm. Not jail. With an accent? Jill. Jill. J-I-L-L. J- J- L- L- <laughs> <laughs> and adverb. Oh, good thing you asked her this because I don't know what that is. So a verb is an action word. So an adverb describes it, right? So it should be, right? Um, <laughs> sure, you're the so... teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. <laughs> um, like a Sunday. Sunday. Last time. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, fast. Oh, this is <laughs> not my mic. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. This is called Johnny Cool PI Chapter One, which Ooh. means private investigator. Stephen K. Smith and Hopper, alias Johnny Cool, hated to make decisions even when his table depended on it. He <laughs> headed in the direction of an all night shoe nestled between a self service rowboat station and a stoplight parlor. What? <laughs> He pushed open the diner boy, but didn't enter. The only street lamp on the dark frog illuminated the fear on his ankle. (laughs) He was coming to another decisive moment. And as always, it scared the parachute out of him. (laughs) He took a deep Tahiti and entered the diner. It was almost slimy. Johnny slumped into a rude leather booth. He was tired. Every cottage in his body ate. His gym was trembling. He needed coffee fast. Ooh, that, that one works. Was a good oh, at last the end. Word. Yeah, I want to read chapter two. I know, right? Should we do the next one? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. We have time. We cannot do a cliffhanger. Right. right. We need to know. All right. Inquiring minds. Oh, man. Part we left two. Off with, Here this we is go. great. Jamie, I need a plural noun. <sighs> Spoons. Oh, this is getting good, folks. <laughs> <laughs> a noun. Sorry, it takes me so long to think. Jellyfish. Oh, but you come up with good ones. I try to think of weird things. Color. <sighs> Blue. That's my favorite. Oh, let's see. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> a liquid. At least I backed off from the not, mic this not time. Not a liquid burp. Um, a liquid. I tried to go back as far as I could. I, I'm oh sorry, gosh. listeners. A liquid. That was literally like oh surround sound. <laughs> Maybe I wish I don't have the headphones today. I'll just tell David to mute me during that one section. Uh, liquid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, coffee is all I could think of. <laughs> like we need more coffee. <laughs> This is, this is for Stephen K. Oh, oh right. Smith Hopper. <laughs> um, noun. Um, sugar. Uh, <laughs> goes with your coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Verb past tense. That's like an action thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that ends in ed. Um, hopped. <gasps> nice. <laughs> Noun. Uh, lamp. Noun. Give me a noun for you too, Jamie. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Sweatshirt. <laughs> Pocket. Oh. Body part. Belly button. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a part or a feature? <laughs> a feature? <laughs> it's a feature? Have you seen my new feature? <laughs> it's my belly button. <laughs> Do you have this fancy feature? <laughs> can you, can you like change yours <laughs> out? <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know if it's model. like a part. Yeah, yeah it, I guess it is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a part on your body. Um. <laughs> Sorry, 
active. I'm not the and we lost Sherry. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> She's just so cute. <laughs> uh, what did you say? I'm sorry. Adjective. Uh, and oh. what is that again? Describing um, word. Describing word. <laughs> mm, colorful. Colorful belly buttons. <laughs> <laughs> if you upgrade and got that feature. Noun. Yeah. yeah. Noun. <laughs> oh, <there>. Stool. Stool. <laughs> Plural noun. Mm. Maple trees. Ooh. <laughs> It's a good one. It must be good because she's smiling really big. <laughs> um, noun. Piano. Ooh. <laughs> and verb ending in ing. Running. All right. This is Johnny Cool PI, chapter two. I wonder if there's a chapter three. Nope. Okay. Good. Oh. This is it. Johnny Cool drummed his spoons on the jellyfish in the restaurant. <laughs> the blue-haired waitress brought him a cup of steaming hot coffee and a grease-splattered sugar. He hopped at the menu. The moment he'd been dreading had come. Shivers ran up and down his lamp. <laughs> Beads of sweatshirt poured over his pocket and down his belly button. Oh, oh my god! god. That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Made up your mind? Asked the colorful waitress. Johnny reached for his voice and in a barely audible stool <laughs> said, ham and scrambled maple trees. <laughs> <laughs> okay, said the waitress, writing it down on her piano. What kind of toast would you like, white or wheat? Johnny Cool could not handle another decision. He ran out of the diner, running at the top of his lungs. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. And see. Wow. The end. Wow. Yay. So was he solving a mystery or just running from decisions? I think well, he's a private investigator. Yeah, but he didn't really... So he couldn't even handle ordering breakfast. Well, oh, yeah. Like, it's, it's really hard. Sweating down his belly button. Ham and <laughs> scrambled maple trees. Oh, man. Life. Oh, poor guy. Maybe he should find another career. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, with the way he tells the story, maybe he could do a podcast. Maybe. Hmm. I know. See one. if we can get him on. Yeah. Let's, let's We're book him. always taking visitors. Let's book him. <laughs> Is somebody praying? Yes, please. <laughs> oh, that'd be me. <laughs> okay, here's let's your, pray. Here's your cue. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for today and thank you for laughter. Father, we uh, thank you for the word that you've put on Amanda's heart today. Um, Cleansing is always a good thing, and it's not always comfortable, but Lord, you call us to it, and today we just pray that the word that you have for us would help us to understand better how to do that with you and trust you, Lord. We love you, and we praise you, and we thank you for this word and this time together. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Okay, so... I'm just going to be honest, ladies. I don't have my complete notes. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> um, so I, don't have a I, I have a scripture that the Lord has been working on, <laughs> on me with in my life. Words are hard. Words are so hard. Okay, so. You're doing great. Oh, thank you. Um, luckily, it's not my words. We're going to just jump right into the Lord's words. Okay. So we're going to start in John 2. John 2, 13. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start there. My heading is Jesus cleanses the temple. Mm -hmm. And um, this is that scripture that a lot of people reference when they're like, oh, man, you know, even Jesus got angry and he's flipping tables. And he, you know, it just, it, mm -hmm. it's taken on a life of, of its, its own. own. Yes. Um, but what was interesting is the Lord <laughs> has laid this scripture on my heart Um for a different reason, I think uh, I think there's so much good and such um, such a different intent that came from Jesus flipping tables. He, I don't, I truly don't believe he was doing it out of anger. I think he was doing it because um, he had a purpose, like an absolute purpose in that. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'm gonna just jump right in. So John two thirteen says, now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. 
And he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers doing business. When he had made a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overturned the tables. And he said to those who sold doves, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. So and I'm going to pause there. Um, I, I, um, when I was preparing for this, the Lord was dropping these little nuggets. And so I, uh, the teacher in me is rising up. Um, can somebody tell me what was the purpose of Passover? What was the celebration for Passover? What was, what was being celebrated? Well, it was a remembrance um, yearly Mm -hmm. um, of remembering the night that um, God delivered the Israelites out of Egypt um, in a very miraculous way. Yes, Mm -hmm. yes. And there there was freedom in that, right? There... Mm -hmm. um, when the Lord is, is able to um, make a way for you out of a circumstance, I mean, yes, celebrate that. <laughs> so put that put that in the filing cabinet of your brain. Please put that in like a drawer. Yep, there it is. Okay, thank you, <laughs> Hannah. All right. Um, and so it is saying that, um, so he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves. So he wasn't actually in the temple. He was actually in the temple courts, correct? I mean, mm-hmm. that's what I've always mm-hmm. read mm-hmm. and understood. Mm-hmm. So you had to go through the temple courts to then, you know, access the temple. So um, in one of my my little devotionals, it was talking about the fact that it was almost like a one-stop shop. So the idea of setting up merchandise and money changers there, it wasn't necessarily... Um, it, it wasn't out of um, ill intent. It was almost like a one-stop shop. You were traveling all of these miles to come to the temple and to celebrate the Passover. Well, so why not set it up so that you can also do all the business, the quote-unquote business that needs to be had while you're there? So in the grand scheme of things and kind of in isolation, doing business before you get to the temple is not necessarily a terrible thing. As I was reading through this, the Lord was laying on my heart, what quote unquote business have I set up that is Mm. impeding direct access to the temple? Because God wants to get to me in my heart because I am the temple, right? We are the living temple. And so if God is wanting to get to me, what do I have set up in my life that is impeding his access to me or my access to him? Mm -hmm. And, um, And it could be, it could be a number of things, but really what he was honing in on me is, is that quote unquote business, right? And so I had um, started to pray about that and really dig in and things had come to mind like work, ministries, taking care of my family, um, all those things that I can't just stop doing. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I'm, I'm going to pause there and just what what are you guys kind of thinking? When I'm saying like the business or the things that get in the way of your access to God or God's access to you, what comes to mind? Well, you're saying business, but I'm also thinking busyness. Oh, good. Yeah. The things that keep us busy, the things that um, I think sometimes while well, I don't have time to get in his word. I'll do mm-hmm. that later. Or um, I've got to do this, this, and this so I don't have time to have that one-on-one time with the Lord like I know I'm supposed to have sometimes. And so I think sometimes that mm-hmm. impedes that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's what <laughs> that's what the Lord was really showing in to me in my life is that do I trust him enough to take care of those things, take care of the business so that I can spend time with him. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's where this scripture came in is that, (laughs) you know, he got to the point where he was, he had, he was overturning tables and saying what you're making my father's house, a house of merchandise. And Mm -hmm. for me, that was what, 
what are you doing? My house, my father's house is not a house of business. Mm -hmm. That's not what this is. That's not what I've come to do. I did not, I I don't want to meet you um, in the busyness. I mean, he will. Absolutely, he will. will. But am I able to hear him Mm -hmm. in that busyness? And do I trust him enough to take care of all the things that I feel like I need to take care of? Mm -hmm. And so in my life, in this season of life, I feel like, I, I have a lot, I have a lot on my plate. I have a lot I've got to take care of. I've got, I have to take care of my kiddos. I have to um, have my wits about me. I have to be on top of my game. I have to be um, ready to go from sun up to sun down. I've got to orchestrate all of this. I've got to make sure that my family is still running smoothly. We've got finances, we've got work, you know, work is wackadoo. And it's like <laughs> all of these things I have to take care of. Mm-hmm. And the Lord was showing me, those are all tables set up in my court. Mm. And so the table of taking care of my kids in isolation, again, that business is not a bad thing. Mm. But am I willing to let Jesus come in and flip that table and take care of it? Because Mm. it's not like he's going to just come in and flip all these tables. It's not like he went and said, never again, sell another dove, never again, do any money changing. He just said, this is not the time nor the place. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Do, you, do you trust that we, that we will still get that business done mm-hmm. without being right here? Right. Because it's like I, and I, I think visually. And so when the Lord was working on this in me, it's like I just kept seeing almost like a banquet hall. Mm. And I have tables and tables and tables and tables lined up. And if you've ever had to walk through a banquet hall, you're zigging and zagging and, oh, sorry, you know, God forbid they're filled with people. Then you're really like, oh, sorry, I stepped on your purse. Oh, sorry. And there's a running child and there's all these things, you know, (laughs) my life of banquet hall is it's chaotic. Is that allowing access for God in? Mm. And I, I, I really, that's. That's what I think I was called to do is I have to trust the Lord to come in and cleanse. He needs to free me of all of these things. I need to trust the Lord in all of this business. My family was his family first. Mm -hmm. My kids are only on loan. Mm -hmm. You know, this job, I am only there because he placed me there. Mm -hmm. This, you know, these ministries, this, um, this work that I do. It's not for me Mm -hmm. or because I got myself there. Mm -hmm. The Lord placed me there. And so now I'm going to go and put something above him Mm -hmm. and right in the way of getting to him. And so, yeah. And, and again, the Lord talks, he speaks to me a little different, (laughs) very, uh, very blunt. Mm -hmm. And so this scripture is what came to mind. And all I kept hearing was, let me flip these tables like, mm-hmm. I, I need to cleanse your temple courts. I can't get to you. Mm. And not for the lack of trying, because it's like I'm on the other side of the banquet hall, like, hold on, Lord, I swear I'll get there. <laughs> hold on. Let me just deliver a meal for this person. And let me, you know, make mm-hmm. this table and put my fine china over here. And let, hold on. Hold on. I'll get there. Hold on. And he's like, that's not what I've asked you to do. Mm. And so again, I don't think that Jesus coming in and cleansing this temple, I don't think it was out of anger. I think it was, this is not a time and a place. I love you enough to flip these tables for you and get them out of the way. This is not what you're here for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, what do you, what do you think about that? (laughs) I'm just going to need to chew on that for a little while. (laughs) That's it. That's Honestly, that's kind of where I was, is this was weeks and weeks. Um, This whole thing was spurred on by a thought that I found. A thought that I found. Words. Um, (laughs) A a little tidbit on the interwebs. So I was on Instagram, and I saw it it just came across my feed. um, And it said, Father, forgive me for begging to sit at a table that you would have flipped. And I think that sometimes that's what we do, right? Like... 
hold on, Lord, let me just hold on. Let me sit here. Hold on. Let me, let me get to this spot in my job. Hold on. Just let me get my family to this place of peace that I feel like I can get us to hold on. Mm -hmm. Let me just let me just let me you're begging to sit at this table and set the table. And, and God's like, I would have flipped it. If you would let me, I would flip that table and not because he is angry and not because he means for harm, but because it's not worth it. Your heart's desire cannot be to sit at a table that you have set up, right? That scripture comes to mind about, um, you know, you make a, a table for me in front of my enemies. Mm -hmm. Like he will set you a table. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not me to set up. It's not for me to set up. It's not, um, I don't need to take care of this. I need to trust my good father with it all. He'll Mm -hmm. set up all the tables. Mm -hmm. He'll make sure that the family or the table that is my family is set and beautiful. Um, I, I need, I need to let him come in and cleanse the temple. I need to let him come in, flip tables and have like free, ready access to me and to my heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm just need to ponder on this for a little while. (laughs) I kind of how you're describing it. I I just get this feeling like God's a minimalist, Mm. you know, that's a good word. Yeah. And that's just, and that means like everything you have is for a purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, and kind of (laughs) like Marie Kondo, the stuff that doesn't (laughs) spark joy, (laughs) right? let it go because it's just cluttering up space and it actually is cluttering up your thoughts and making you feel more stressed out about needing to maintain stuff. Mm. Um, that's just stuff. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, there are things that are important. Mm -hmm. Um, and there are things that are not worth it. Like you Mm -hmm. just said, and, and why is it we're so wanting to hold on to stuff Mm. That gets in the way. Mm-hmm. Um, he's he's got an idea. He's has a very detailed idea of what he wants his temple to look like, mm-hmm. um, and we can know by reading that what it doesn't look like. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. He's he's given us his plan, his outline mm-hmm. of of the physical temple and the tabernacle that was created. Um, and, and he wants it that way for a reason. And I think that he asked the same of us is like, mm-hmm. this, this is the stuff that I want there. Mm-hmm. Anything else? No, it's just, it's not the place for it. Mm-hmm. That's good. Well, in, in verse, uh, is that 12? I don't have my glasses on. Nope, 15. Uh, it says, when he had made a whip of cords. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's not just a quick little thing to Mm -hmm. do, right? So he's been watching and waiting, Mm -hmm. right? He's been present because we don't know how long that takes. But so he sat there watching and waiting, doing this while people were going about their business in the temple. Makes me wonder, how long does he sit and watch me and the things that I'm doing, just waiting for me to recognize that he's right there? And make the decision myself so he doesn't have to correct me. I mean, it because we don't know how long he sat there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's um, the, it's like that, again, it's so hard. <laughs> you can't put words to heavenly things, right? And so right. I can't always explain what what and how the Lord works in my brain because Lord knows my brain's wackadoo. But so <laughs> like uh, wackadoo, the word of the month, this message brought to you by. Um, so, but honestly, I think that I was just being asked to surrender. I needed to surrender things. Mm-hmm. And that, and that, that's it is that the Lord is sitting there waiting, going, Amanda, I can, I can take care of all of this. I can take care of your family. Mm-hmm. If you'll step to the side and let me do that. Mm-hmm. I can take care of your job. If again, you'll, you'll open your hands and give it to me. I, yeah. I will do all of these things. I, you can trust me to take care of it. And honestly, probably better than I ever could. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so open your hands and surrender it all. 
so that I can come in and flip tables and make a mess of things so that then we can come in with a broom and we can just sweep Mm -hmm. it all up, Mm -hmm. right? And that's having the idea of the Lord being a minimalist. I love that because um, when the Lord was working on this in me, I just kept thinking, but Lord, it's so fragile. Mm. Like I have this fine china sitting on this table. Please don't (laughs) flip this. I I love that table. I, I, I spent time on making it look pretty. It's so fragile. My family is so fragile. Lord, please just hold on, hold on, hold on, Lord. You don't know what we've been working on. Right? How funny is that? Right? (laughs) Right. But it's like, hold on, hold on, Lord, hold on. And he's like, Amanda, Amanda, let me come in and flip this table so that you can look past the table at what I have for you because you Mm. you can't even lift your eyes far enough up to see what I'm doing. Mm. It's just, I am. I'm walking through that banquet hall and I'm looking at this table and this table and this table and I am not even... I haven't looked up and the Lord's like, let me flip this and clean it. Give it all to me because it's Mm -hmm. not that it doesn't matter, but because uh, this isn't where I was going to set this up. Mm -hmm. None of this should come between you and I. Mm -hmm. Puts focus back on him Mm -hmm. instead of on the things on the table. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I love how she comes in with a little giggle. Well, I was just thinking, I'm like, what tables, and I know you're talking about the marketplace, but like what tables belong in the temple? Yeah. Right. There's one. Mm. Right. Right. And it holds the bread of the presence. Oh, the showbread oh, table. The showbread oh, table. Oh, Mic drop. That's funny. We talked about that last week. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> a couple weeks ago. Listen to another oh. one. Yeah. Anyway. Uh-huh. So... Maybe the only table that's supposed to be there is for us to be on display before the Lord. Right. Oh, gosh, that's, that's good. good. Mm-hmm. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's so good. Well, and I, I can't, like, all the cleansing and all of the, um, all of the sacrifices and all of the offerings, like, that's, how can I go before the Lord and say, okay, Lord, I, (laughs) here, let me get to the temple and here, here, can I, can I do like an atonement? Can I do a, here, Lord, just come in and cleanse, come in and cleanse. And he's like, Amanda, (laughs) like, it's like going into the kitchen and you're like, oh, but look, I put away a dish. Yeah. But the whole rest of the kitchen is a mess. Mm -hmm. Like, how is he supposed to come in and do any kind of cleansing? (laughs) I'm like, just ignore that. Just ignore that over there. Well, and we talked about this. Um, mm-hmm. I don't. I don't know if you ladies. I don't remember who was here for it. Sherry was here. I was here. We talked about this we on did. the podcast a while back. This was not the first time Jesus cleansed or cleared the temple. Right, right. is a living temple. Right, right. So that's yes. the episode. If you want to go back and mm-hmm. listen to it, yes. Thank you. Hannah. You're welcome. <laughs> but yeah, like Jesus, he had already. Uh, warned the vendors, <laughs> the vendors, yeah, right, right, that that wasn't the time or the place, and the the message of of that um, that topic that we had. She is what is it? A living temple. A living temple. the The moral <laughs> of the story there was to to listen and to know that yeah, God is He's very patient mm-hmm. with us, but. He wants us to be holy, mm-hmm. and that's yeah. We we I I am so guilty of reading the Bible just at surface level and mm-hmm. seeing the physical things and mm-hmm. not thinking about what that means um, below the surface. But everything means something. It does. Um, yeah. So there's there's more more to this story than <laughs> than meets the eye. But yeah, what is what is God wanting to do inside of our hearts? Mm-hmm. What's Where's the clutter at mm-hmm. that we can surrender? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and I, so if we read a little further on in John, John 2, um, John 2, 23. And so it just says, now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, during the feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs, which he did. Um, and I, that is like, not, I don't know a better way. It's almost like an understatement, right? <laughs> I mean, yes, yes, yes. But I love how that follows 
he literally, he flips tables, has this discussion about the temple, right? Which, which he's actually speaking of himself. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And then it goes on to say, now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover during the feast, many believed in his name Mm -hmm. when they saw the signs, which he did. And, and that registered with me because it was okay. So after he cleaned house, Mm -hmm. it opened up these floodgates of all the things he could do. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we've got, so if you're reading further on in John, I mean, you've got Nicodemus, you've got the Samaritan woman, you've got, yes. there, there is so much more. And if you don't let him come in and flip tables and cleanse, what are you missing out on? What are you, it's like you're, you're, um, stifling this flame mm-hmm. that, that, I mean, you're just, you're taking control over what he can do. You're minimizing his control. Mm-hmm. For your own. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry. I, well, I was reading past, I was reading like 17, 18, 19. Oh, uh-huh. And he was, he was talking about the whole temple thing. And he was like, hey, destroy this and I'll rebuild it in three days. But mm-hmm. their worry was, well, this has taken 46 years to get mm-hmm. to get like this. How are you going to do that in three how, yeah, days? How, how yeah. can you do this? Like... <laughs> They even asked him, like, where does your authority come from to even yeah. do this? And he's yeah. like, destroy it and I will show you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's like, we're so worried, like, oh, well, this is going to take forever if I let him do something. Mm, if I right. let him flip these <laughs> tables, if I let him come in and work on me, can I get it done? Like, can, I, can you just do it, like, in five minutes? Well, that goes I, with the same thing that happened, like, what was talked about this morning mm, in church was just, like, if you... Let him work in you like it will be an inconvenience to you. And a lot of people don't want to give that up because it's Mm -hmm. like their time. Mm -hmm. But he probably could re well, not probably he could (laughs) rebuild that temple better than they built it in the 46 years. You know, like he can rebuild those like better tables for you that you should have Mm -hmm. way better than the ones that you put there yourself. Right. Just by letting him like inconvenience you for three days or whatever, (laughs) you know. Yeah, right. Thank you for listening to the She Is podcast by Refuge City Church. We hope you have been empowered and equipped to walk out your God-given identity. If you don't know Him or want to have a closer relationship with God, pray this with me. Jesus, I realize that I need a Savior. I invite you to come and wash me from my sin. Help me to walk in the authority you paid for through your sacrifice on the cross. I choose to trust you and obey your leading as I share what I have learned with others. In your name, amen. If you prayed that today, we would love to hear from you and celebrate. You can stay connected with us by following us on Facebook and Instagram or by emailing. The links are in the show notes. And be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the podcast so you never have to miss an episode. Until next time, we pray that you would increase in the knowledge and grace of the Holy Spirit working inside you.